Hello, my name is Anya and today we are going to have an image on our homepage that changes every couple seconds and we're going to build this in bubble.io. Here I have a sample website with an image over here that changes periodically. This is a cool visual element to add to your websites and let's figure out how to build it in bubble. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new page in my app. And then I'm going to double click and go to layout where I want the container layout to be a column. What this basically means is that we will be able to build responsively. So it looks good on all different screen sizes. For a more in-depth tutorial on responsive design, check out the link in the description box below. Now that we have a container, a column layout here, we can start to build in some of the elements and everything on our page is going to live under this group name. We want this to be a row instead, and I'll show you why in a second. But over here, I want to go and change some of the width settings. I also want to give it a fixed height of, say, 500. This is going to take up a good chunk of our screen. Now I want to drag another group in here, and I'm going to call this group text. If we look over here, we have some text on the side, and that's really the functionality we want to add in here. One thing I want to do is click on this page element again, and instead of the width being around 1000, I'm going to make it 1400, so we sort of have a larger screen size, and you can see a little bit more what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to click on this group main over here and actually give it a max width of 1200. With this and then put it down here in horizontal alignment, put it in the center. What this means is that even if you're looking at this website on a huge monitor that stretches from side to side very large, the main content will still stay in the center, which just gives the website a better feel. Now we can go back to this group text over here and give it a fixed height of 500 as well. This will allow it to stretch the entirety of the available space. Then we're going to go ahead and give it a max width of a 50%. This will allow it to take up only half of this group names space. Here we have group text, but I also want to copy and paste it. So we have a copy and I'm going to call this group images. This is really what's going to be storing the rotating image slideshow. Now that we have this main skeleton set up, I'm going to go back to this group text and start to add in some of the text. I'm not going to focus on visual design too much in this space, but just a little bit to give you an idea of what it would look like. Over here, let's click back on group text. We can see that when I drag some text in, it goes directly to this top over here. This has to do with the container layout, which is column, but I'm also going to make it the center. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some padding, 64 pixels on the top and bottom, and then 30, 64 pixels on the side. This will just center it a little more, so it's a little more squashed in that space. Then under this text, let's actually make it a little bigger so you can get a better idea of what it would look like. Let's add a subheading. Then we can maybe have a call to action. We can make this even smaller. And let's just say under it all, we want a button sign up. And we can just let this stretch all the available space. Make it a fixed height of 48. That's all personal preference. But here you can start to see how this would compose of an interesting side thing like we have over here. I'm also going to go ahead and add 16 pixels of gap spacing so there's a little space. But you can see how if you want the text and the subheading to be closer together, you can group these elements Oops, you can group these elements by right-clicking in a column container. And then you can add some sort of custom spacing in between. Okay, now that we have some basic skeleton for the text, I want to focus over here on the images because this is really the unique part of this tutorial. 
In order to show rotating images like we see over here, we need to have some sort of bank of images. This is where the database comes in. So I'm going to go over here to data. But instead of creating something in the database, which, which requires us to make a call to this database and retrieve huge sums of data, we want to keep it more on the front end. So I'm going to go over here and create an option set called image slideshow. An option set basically gives us a fixed set of options that can be retrieved a lot quicker than getting something from the database. These also can only be altered by the app developer, which is exactly the functionality we need. Every option set is built in with a display, but I'm going to create a new attribute called image and make it of type image. This will allow us to associate an image with a given item of type image slideshow. Then over here, I went ahead and created five different types of this object. And if we click on it, we can see how it's got the name, but it also has an image associated. From here, we can then retrieve it and store it in something. This is going to be a repeating group because we need to be able to store multiple things of that given image. I'm going to, again, let it stretch the entire way and then give it a fixed height of 500, just so we see it stretch the entire height as well. Now I'm going to give it a type content image slideshow. I'm just going to choose all the image slideshow in the database. Instead of four rows and one column, as you can see here, I'm going to make it just one row and one column. So this repeating group is only showing one image. This seems really odd, but you'll see why in a second. Now that we have the skeleton here, I'm going to go ahead and go down here to visual elements and drag an image into here. I'm going to again let this stretch the entire way of the available space. Make this 500 as well. And then instead of choosing a static image, I'm going to choose a dynamic image. I'm just going to choose current cells image slideshows image. This will store it over here. Run mode rendering is how this will deal with images of different sizes. You can choose this accordingly, or you can make sure all of your images are the appropriate size. But I'm going to just make this zoom because normally it gives the best results. OK, let's preview this now. We can see that here we have our repeating group, and it's storing all of these different images. However, right now there's only spot for one of these images to show, and that's what we see. But how do we make this change like this one over here does? This is going to be with a workflow. So I'm going to click here and choose a do every five seconds event, but you can make this any interval. I'm just going to do three seconds so we can see them change more often. Then down here I'm going to go to element actions and under repeating group we can see show next. This means it'll just show the next item of the repeating group. Then I'm going to click wrap around so when it hits that fifth item because there are only five items in the repeating group it'll show the first one again. Let's try this out. I'm going to make it step by step so we can see exactly when it kicks in. It had been three seconds, so we now see the show next of the repeating group. And we can see that's this over here. When we click run next, we can see the item change. And it happens again and again. So at this point, we've set it up really nice and we can see this rotating image slideshow that just wrapped around. In the beginning, I mentioned that we're going to be working on building this responsively. So I just want to show you what that looks like. Here in our UI builder, we can go to this responsive setting and we can see how when we change the screen size, this changes accordingly until the mobile size when it wraps around like so. I'm going to go here and then click these three dots, go down to more tools and click developer tools. Then let's click on this button right here. 
What this gives us is allows us to see our website on different screen sizes. So right now we're at 1,200, but as we see this go down, we can see how this reacts. We see that run uh, mode zoom rendering over here, where as the screen size changes, it just cuts off parts of the image until eventually it starts wrapping around. We want to make this wrap around a little nicer and a little earlier because this still looks very squished to me. Before we learn how to do that, which is with breakpoints, I want to show you what happens when we go past 1200. We see this continue to stay in the center as we stretch this out more. This allows us to keep it nice and framed and not super squished. I'm going to go back to the bubble editor and talk a little bit about breakpoints now. Let's click on this group text. Right now, it's always going to take up 50% of the space until that 50% is less than 280 because that's the smallest this goes. I'm actually going to remove this min width, but you can make it accordingly for your application because what I want to focus on down here is the conditional. I'm going to say when current page width, which is the screen size, is less than mobile landscape 768, which is a standard breakpoint, then we want the min width to be a percent and make it a hundred percent. If it is less than a mobile landscape size, then we want this to take up the entirety of this space. Then I'm going to go over here to group images and paste that same condition. If both of these are taking up 100% of the space, it has to wrap around because there's no possible way for that to happen. Right now we're at 833. It's continuing to share the space. But as we drop below 768, I think was the breakpoint, we can see that this wraps around and goes on the other side like so. And this looks great. This is exactly, exactly the functionality we want. We could have even made the breakpoint a little later. But I like what I'm seeing. And I hope you can add this to your application and have a little fun with it. Thank you so much, and I hope you learned something.